Hello viewers and welcome to part two of our E3 WRC8 content from E3 2019 uh, and thanks to everyone who uh, watched the uh, part one and uh, gave us lots of feedback and comments. I am looking at all of your comments. Uh, I do try to get back to as many as possible. You've raised a lot of issues you'd like us to discuss and we're going to come back on a few rather than just replying to each comment. It's easier for me to do a video and then get back to some of those comments on mass. Uh, on various different aspects you guys have highlights, highlighted and my impressions on those. Uh, just looking here at this excellent helicopter cam again. I really do like this helicopter cam racing around Monte Carlo. You see all these details and views that you just wouldn't normally see when you're just driving along in the rally. It just shows how much they've mapped to the environments and the whole new level of detail that's gone into it really is very impressive indeed. Uh, and it's great to see that Kiloton have maximised the two-year break in trying to really bring lots of elements together on this. Certainly lots to explore and we're only, we're only sort of starting on that journey at the moment. There's going to be a lot to look forward to. And it's great to see the support from all the rally fans uh, that have been tuning in and asking lots of questions. You all want a great rally game and I think that every year they make a step towards it. Certainly this extra break has given them the opportunity but one of the key aspects on any racing game is of course controller gameplay uh, and I devoted this video to the handling with the controller and how it works now I'm going to start in WRC junior class then go to WRC 2 and WRC as I work my way up the speed and try to improve my skills now at first uh, I'm just using clear weather as I was before uh, and it's a nice sort of stable way uh, I, and it, it takes a bit of getting used to uh, driving these cars slightly different front wheel drive uh, the handbrakes uh, you need to lean on the handbrake a bit more in some corners uh, it's very stable on the whole uh, so it's really just a matter of slowing down for corners and getting the car in and getting on the power it's it's in a way, you, it's hard to push in these cars in many respects. It's, uh, they never feel as quick. You know, when you move up the rally classes, you really do see the balance change and the amount of power you have at your disposal. So first impressions then. I'm obviously a wheel user, as many of you know. I don't use a control pad for racing that often. I do now and again. Uh, in terms of games that optimize, you know, I would say use a controller the best. They would be Gran Turismo and Forza Motorsport. Forza Motorsport is designed for the controller. Doesn't work that great on a wheel, comparatively speaking. Gran Turismo's optimized for everything. Works really well. So it's impressive so far. First impressions. Again, more improvements have been made since the previous WRC games in the handling front. I will point out I've always been more of a fan of the Xbox controller above the PlayStation controller when it comes to racing games, just because of the travel of the triggers, which makes a big difference in terms of uh, progressive acceleration and that is absolutely key in some of these corners here as I'm cutting it very tight to some of those apexes why not trying to get the time out of the car get it into those apexes get it into those corners and get on the power as quickly as possible uh, I am using automatic gears with the controller uh, just because usually I use a wheel and I find just adapted to controller it was quicker to just do that for this video but either way I think also it's important that some of you guys can see how playable it is for a lot of you who have a controller and you're going to be playing with this uh, and how much practice it takes. Inputs are basically the same. So I was able to adapt from the wheel to the control pad in terms of the feel of the acceleration and braking. It felt nice and intuitive in terms of the transition. The car <clears throat> turned in well. Struggling a bit with the handbrakes in this car. I needed to handbrake more. I'm much more comfortable with the WRC2, WRC class for handbrake turns, no doubt about that. I've learned the nuances of the course. And you can see as I try and navigate this section. And improve my lines around some of these corners, just getting more aggressive all the time. Tight in here. There's a bit of wheel spin here and there. But you've got to be committed. There's no way really you can do this section slowly. You've just got to go for it. And uh, But I do enjoy it. I think that's one of the things that comes across with me doing this 
video. I wasn't finding this driving a chore. I was really enjoying driving this stage and as soon as I finished I just wanted to do it again but faster. And so even in this video I get quicker and quicker with the different cars, just you know, a bit more risky uh, and just going for it a bit more. Sections like that are always tricky though because you need to brake a little bit before you get there because you can actually jump quite high on that jump and can, that can throw you into the wall. First time I went through that corner I went really fast through it and uh, it wasn't good but that way. So, but you know, you run a stage, you adapt quickly to where the key areas are. This corner, I think somewhere, no, the one after this caught me out. This one up here, this was the one that right-hander caught me out. That's the, quite a tricky bend. You get massive oversteer as you go up it. Uh, and uh, it's, um, it's certainly a negative camber corner and that really can throw you off. So this car is your entry level into the game. This is where a lot of you will start. This is where I advise a lot of you playing to start because I, as usual, jumped into the, as you'll see on a lot of videos, I tend to just jump into the fastest, hardest car. I turn everything off in terms of assists and just go for it. But I found this game very challenging. You know, I would say you really want to start in the junior WRC, uh, get a feel for the courses and the general inputs and then work your way up to the WRC2. It really is an excellent difficulty curve in getting your head around the various you know, input techniques required to maximize your speed. So that was uh, the first run, now into WRC2. Uh, immediate difference in speed and handling and balance. Just going around that first corner. And away we go. We'll be downhill there, then on the power. Raking quite early because we're going downhill, swinging it round immediately. Oh, that felt okay. Not bad. So, you know, you kind of almost forget you're playing with a control pad, actually, uh, in terms of the racing itself. Felt good. I'm using the bonnet cam here. Oh, look at that. Sliding in nicely into the corners. And look at that mountainside, all the detail, texturing. Looks great with the snow on it. Into the tunnel, breaking early. You really want to get early. It's very easy to get caught out. And again, here, nice and slow. Don't speed into that tunnel. There's more time to be lost than gained. So you want to get in nice and slow, get the car positioned, and get on the power. That's the process. Up here, there's a lot of speed to be found. I mean, next, the, the top players will find extra speed through here. I've got occasional lifts where I'm preparing the car for the corner, but I watch the top players, and they'll be on it through some of these corners. They'll know how to get the car in. And again, corners like this where you're tentative. So I was racing through here and I was, I was enjoying it. I was immediately feeling, I've got this, I understand this, I'm with it. And the weather starts changing. We have dynamic weather on for the first time now. And I hadn't realized, and I was thinking, oh, the car's sliding around a bit. What's, what's going on here? Is it? Am I not used to something? What's going on? Uh, and I completely forgot at this stage that I changed the options to dynamic weather. So you'll start to see the weather deteriorating more and more as we go up the mountain. Uh, and it, it first came in the handling before you actually start to see it. You start to see the, 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 the uh, atmosphere changing. Again here, I'm thinking, right, I'm going to start um, taking it a bit more easy. The, the, I seem to be sliding a bit, and I wasn't before. And start to see the specks of rain on the screen uh, and I realized before this as I say I made those mistakes I was getting on the power than I normally did and and now I'm getting on the power much slower I'm more progressive on the power uh, the car's sliding around a lot the the, temp the weather's changing and suddenly this course that I thought I knew that I've done several times everything was changing you know gearing would be changing and your braking distances are changing and your, your power and the power is changing in terms of how you get on the power. You can see the moisture starting to gather on the road now. Uh, this was a whole different experience all of a sudden. So, you know, and luckily, obviously, I do a lot of various racing games and track racing. So, you know, for me, I'd, I was adapting as if my tyres were falling off in a way. And I was thinking, right, let's extend the braking distances, go a bit slower into the corners. And again, just getting a bit too wide. I just didn't quite know the the speed I could go through there. And then it sort of clicks. Then, then I then I realised, oh, I see. Right, okay. I understood why where I went wrong there, and I start to get the hang of it now. And basically, the rule is you've got to go slower. You just can't go as fast as you did 
uh, and you've got to be more progressive on the corners to slow in and progress acceleration through slide the car through the corners but what's happened is that you've changed the stage now it's a completely different animal so when you're in a rally you're going to choose your tires at the beginning of the rally knowing the weather and what do you do do you, do you put wet weather tires on your car or dry weather in the sense that the first half of the rally may be dry and the second half may be wet which part are you actually good at where you know you're going to lose time and gain time uh, and that's going to be really challenging i think in terms of competitions when they start to run longer stages and there's variance in types of weather this is something we're going to look at more on future videos but with the opportunity here i thought let's let's go through it you can see that it's really wet now and you know i'm slowing to some of these corners and i would have been aggressive on the power through there easy to spin out so again now you know i'm just trying to go too quickly in this in these weather conditions in a moment it goes back to dry and i get to wrc and then i'm straight on it again but it's it was a learning experience for me having the dynamic weather here and i think that's going to add a lot for you guys watching this but as you can see control of play working well um i'm not hanging around you know i, I mean for me there's no point in just cruising through the stage i've got to try and put some speed into it because otherwise what's the point you know we really want to test it and that means occasionally mistakes if you're going to be pushing a bit more in terms of trying to get speed through some of these corners throwing the car into the corner and now committed as much as i can be for this final part everything through here just, you have to sort of lift and coast and gently apply the power again through that corner and again lift there and then on the power once you're through the exit and then along over the finish so good fun enjoyed that that was really nice that was a really good experience the dynamic weather wow that's going to change the game that's going to be really interesting to see how that works when you're doing full rally distances you know, you're getting damage on your car, you're pushing to the limit, you're choosing what tyres you want for the, because the weatherman can tell you what's what. Uh, and now I move up to the WRC class. And we're going to jump into this and we're going to see how we get on here. So selecting the viewpoint and away we go. There was no restarts for this as well. So it was just a matter of getting in and moving on to the next car and track. So I had it fresh in my mind and now onto WRC immediately way more speed and it suddenly because I've worked my way up in this process I suddenly felt I'd learned a lot I learned a lot from the dynamic weather I'd learned a lot about the feel of the car and how to be more progressive on acceleration from WRC2 and now with the dry conditions here I'm still using dynamic weather but this time it came up clear uh, so but I tell you, it's hard enough when you're like there, the car gets light into that tunnel. You know, you're sort of gently braking and then trying to slow the car down there. Very tricky, lots of power. You can't think at this stage when you're recording this video, you know, I want a clear run. You, you know, sometimes when I do these videos, I think, goodness, I just want a clear run. Then I can make the video and put it together. Uh, I think when I was making this video, I was just thinking, I want to go faster. I want to go faster. I need to make this as quick as possible you know I've really got to give it everything and and, and that's it really and uh, I think in using the controller there's no point in slow going slow through these corners let's just see how fast we can go and so there are going to be mistakes but uh, first impressions very good I just want to go too fast through. I'm trying to find the limit through that corner it's a strange corner you, you if you're sort of half throttle you feel like you're feel like there's more speed and, and you can quickly end up going too fast again here you can dive into these corners but you've got to get it just right just trying to slow down there luckily it's uphill that helps me a little bit if I need to decelerate quickly and, uh, sliding into those corners getting used to it on the controller as well because obviously first time different car just it, it all um feels a bit different just touch that rock there I was trying to straight line that corner I knew that I managed to get away with it but it, it's amazing when you do a little, little sort of mistake like that it does throw you off for the next few corners just when you're pushing again a bit of braking here car sweeps around but these cars have got a lot of grip a lot of performance amazing performance on a modern WRC car you know that it's just just they're just on it these cars 
sliding through there nicely. And now on this section, lovely mountain views there. A bit close to the wall, but we got away with it, trying to avoid the wall on the left there, where I have uh, been caught out with four. Car getting a bit light through there, but we're okay. We got through it. Good speed through that section. So, latter half of the race now of the uh, stage. Too wide there, and then got caught on the wall. Just trying to carry too much speed in that section, but that's okay. That's on me. That's on me. It's uh, not a control issue. And then uh, just trying to get the car in, just find, find those braking points where I can brake as late as possible. The thing is, is that these modern rally cars, you really need to commit to the driving. It's not like you can be tentative all the time. You've got to floor it sometimes and just hope that the car sort of hangs in there. And finding that limit is a process, no doubt about it. Do not want to hit the wall on the right. You've got to get the car in early there through that section. So, oh, just hitting that barrier. I knew it was there. I knew I was cutting it fine, but that's okay. We've got to find more speed, guys. We've got to go faster. There's no hanging around here. We're just on it. And now through these final few sections here. Tricky corner. Never like that corner. It's funny, there are always corners on these rallies that you remember just because you remember they're bad corners sometimes and they can catch you out. So, now just trying to get along onto the high speed straight. Oh, close to the wall there, but we made it through and now we're on this high speed section. Can't understeer through there. There's, you're not flat through there, you see. You're flat and then you're lifting, you're slowing here, braking, got to get the car in, that's it, nice. And now we're on it. I'm thinking, let's go flat, flat, flat. We're going through here. Flat. And then lift, send the car into the corner and get on the power. Made it through. Good. Flat through there. Good speed. Flat, flat. Let's do it flat. Okay, flat again. Oh, and there, was a, there was a bit of wall jutting out there. The car went light at that point and it threw me over. So I thought, you know what, let's just do it committed. We're on the final straight. Let's just have a go and see how we get on from there. So that's a bit of controller gameplay in all the three uh, core classes. And we'll have a look a lot more of this to different types of surface texture and on the various different rallies. And I think the first insight into the weather was great as well. I'll be looking forward to trying some of that out. So yeah, first impressions then guys, really good. Uh, I found it quite well, very playable with the controller and I think they're doing a good job with that. And they've improved the handling various throughout as well. We're going to talk about more about that in a future video. I do think they've implemented the use of the handbrake much better this time. It just feels better. It feels better when using the Thrustmaster handbrake. You do get that nice analog feeling, uh, but it also feels better just by you know using the digital handbrake as well. The, the, the way the car works, the inertia, the control you have. And you've got the various views from the replay cameras here as well. Some of this is still a work in progress, of course, and looking really nice. And in future videos, I'm going to look at other stages. Somebody did ask for a clip of uh, Australia. You can see a quick clip of Australia here. Uh, again, looking really nice. And some of these uh, they've built on from the previous game. So I am focusing very much on some of the new stages predominantly. But either way, they've been giving a touch up to all the old stages as well. And we're going to look at some of those in future videos. But uh, all looking great at this stage uh, and we'll see where various improvements have been made but um that's it from me for now on this video and from our e3 content so far and there'll be more from me very soon